so far in this unit, we've talked a lot about graphing lines, slope intercept, standard form. You know, how do I get the equation there? How do I find the slope? How do I find the y intercept? All this other stuff. You always had the equation given to you. What if you don't? Okay. What if instead of being given an equation, you're given the slope and you're given an individual point? Now, if we were asked to graph the line, we could do that. We'd plot the point, we'd go with the slope, we'd be happy. But what if we want the equation instead? So that's what we're going to chat about today. Point slope. Now, this is going to look like a whole lot of variables at the start, but we're going to clean this up really quick and really nice. So point slope form looks like this, but here's the thing. We're going to be plugging in values only in those three spots. The point is going to give us this x1 and y1. And the slope's going to be given to us, m. And then we're going to work on getting it into slope intercept, which we're going to make a note of here. We're going to put it in here to get to y equals mx plus b. We're still going to get back to, to slope intercept even doing this. It just adds a step into the equation. So. We come over here. Here is my x and y ones. There's my m. That's the three things I need to get to plug in and get things done. Let's do it. So y minus, there's my y1 equals m x minus. What happens when you minus a negative? It becomes positive. So this is going to be x plus 1. I could put minus negative, but that tends to confuse people. So all we do on the first step, plug the numbers in where they belong in the form. We're set and ready to go. But the goal is to get it to y equals. So whenever we have parentheses, my next job is to distribute that through, make sure you multiply the negative 4 to both the x and to the 1. And now we're close to the end. Because if the goal is to get to y equals, that's the only thing keeping me from being in y equals right now. So. If we add the 7, and again, notice, why would you put the 7 over there and not here? These are the plain numbers. I can't add 7 to negative 4x. They're not alike. And once y is alone, I'm ready to go. Sure. So that, when you are asked to go from point slope to slope intercept, that's what we're going to do. So nothing real tough, except again, reminding yourself, since both of these are minus, that if you see negative here, you're going to want to make those plus. So y plus 5, because minus negative 5. Ooh, fractions. What's that? So the y, yeah, the y itself, yep, whoa, geez, I'm throwing pens. So yeah, the regular y and the regular x are going to stay exactly the way they are all the time. We're only going to be plugging in numbers to those three spots. And if it happens to be a negative, we're just going to change the sign right away. Good question. And then we're just following x minus negative 6, which will end up making that plus. We're always kind of doing just the opposite of what we see for those values. Now, are we giddy about the fraction? No. Are we going to get rid of it? No. Because that's actually going to make us more work this time. So we're going to do this. We're going to distribute 2 thirds. We're going to be all right. 
So we've got 2 thirds x. Now when I get to the 2 thirds and the 6, I seriously would put 2 thirds in parentheses times 6 and let the calculator do it for me. Okay, that's going to be easier than multiplying by 2 and dividing by 3 and doing all this other business. So the fraction will still be there for my slope, which is fine. Those cancel out, and we've got 2 thirds x, and positive 4 minus 5 is negative 1. We're good to go there. So whenever you're given a point in a slope, that's the route we're going to go. I'm going to plug that in, and then we're ready to graph it or do whatever it is we need to do with that particular point. But sometimes we're not even going to be given the slope. That's just so not nice. Instead, we're just going to be given two points. So when that happens, we have two steps that we got to do. So the first step would be to use the slope formula, which is where we subtract our y's on the top of a fraction and subtract the x's on the bottom. And once we've done that, to find our m, we're going to use that m and either point that we're given. It's not going to matter which one you use. You will end up with the same answer at the end, and we're going to go right back to point slope one more time. So one extra step on these is all we're going to be looking at. Same places we're substituting the numbers. We just got to find the M this time instead of having it given to us. So first things first, let me kind of split this. We won't do all of these. We'll, we'll, we'll pick and choose here. So I would go ahead and label these. So I got X1 and Y1 and x2 and y2. And to be honest, the order doesn't matter. But I just like to be able to see what I'm doing. So I get my fraction bar again. The y's go on top. So y2 minus y1. And then on the denominator, we got x2 minus x1. But again, if you minus a negative, it just becomes plus. So I get that. Let's see here. 7 minus 1 is 6. Negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, there's my M for me to use. Once I did that, step 1 is done. Step two, I'm going to use that M and either point here. It makes no difference, again, which one you use. So I'm just going to go with, I'm going to go with, let's see, M equals two, and I'm going to use negative three, seven. Again, makes no difference. There's my X1 and my Y1. So... I could even just do that to be consistent. That's good to know. Okay. So y minus, there's my y value. So y minus 7 equals <laughs> my m x minus negative 3. And now we're right back in the same situation that we were on the first two. And Hardy writes way too big and is not going to have enough room here. But I'm going to do what I can. So I get set here. Reminder. One goal. Get Y by itself. So we got to add 7 to both sides. I wish I would have had more room to show that, but 
In this particular case, it just didn't work out. So I get that set. Now I will warn you, there are going to be times As you're looking at these, I want to just look at one thing quick. Okay. How do I want to play this? Yeah, let's do one more of these. I'm just trying to figure out, I might switch the order around to what I'm going to do here. All right. So one more, let's do number five. So X1, X2, Y1. Y2, so slope first, here's my slope formula, so Y2 minus negative 5 makes that plus, and then for my X's, X2 minus X1, let's see here. Negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3. 1 minus 10 is negative 9. Wait a minute. Positive 1 third. Ooh. That's not fun. So you're like, okay, so my slope is 1 third. Again, I can use either point. I'm just going to use the first one here. Because it already says x1 and y1, so we might as well use it, right? <clears throat> so I get that slope. And we start using our y equals formula here. So y minus negative 5. So that will become plus. Right, too big again, Hardy. Equals m x minus x1. Ooh. Yeah, this is not fun. Oh, let's see here. If we distribute the one third, you're like, wait a minute. One third times negative 10. Oops, I see what I did. I don't need that run C there anyway. Ooh, okay. Negative 3.33. This is going to be interesting. And decimals are okay here because that's going to be easier to graph anyway. Minus your 5 over. So if I take negative 3.33 and minus 5, negative 8.33. Oof, duh. Now, that's about as ugly as these are going to get. That's why I kind of just tapped the brakes here when we were doing that. So if we're just looking for an equation, we're just given two points, we work that, we're done. Okay? The only other part of this we're going to deal with today is, oh boy, we're going to throw words in. We're going to make this work, though. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down these equations, and there's keywords that we're going to look for to make this easier for us. And here's how this is going to work. So when we're plugging it into slope-intercept form, when we're plugging these into y equals mx plus b, okay, the m number changes, and the b number is a one-time value. And I'll kind of explain what that means as we go. But that's going to be the easiest way for you to make these equations. It's easier than trying to label all these fancy things. So a cab ride costs $4 plus $1.75 per mile driven. Write an equation to represent the cab fare. OK. So the cab fare, I'll just call it C because it starts with C anyway is going to equal, it costs $4 no matter what, okay? That's the one-time cost. 
So that's going to go on the end in my B spot. Plus $1.75 per mile. It changes. For every mile that you drive, you're being charged $1.75. So that number goes in front of your X. That's it. That's the equation. We're done. Okay. Even if you put Y there instead of C, that'd be fine. I don't care. If Clay's destination is 17 miles away and he has $30, will he make it? Okay. 17 miles away, that would be the X value because the X is per mile. So let's see. He got charged. Oops, I got ahead of myself. $1.75 per mile. So we'll plug in 17 for the X plus four. All right, let's see. Clay, are you going to make it? 175 times 17 plus four. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Clay is going to have to hitchhike or figure out a way to come up with $3.75 from somebody. He has $30. This trip is going to cost $33.75. So no, nope, that is not going to work. But that's the thing. If you remember what changes and what doesn't, it's going to make making the equations easier. Even if they look like they're long and hard and, oh my gosh, what's going on? We can make this work. So let's play with one more of these. We'll, we'll come back around to it again tomorrow. Jones is a purchasing a home. The closing costs are $249. Thank you. One time cost. Plus... 3% of the purchase price, okay? Now, this one, we got to think through a little bit. So, our cost, we know the 249 is the one time, okay? That, that I'm comfortable doing right away. Whenever you have a percent, you have to do it in the decimal form. So, if you want to turn 3% into a decimal you need to divide it by 100 because there's 100% in anything, which is 0 0.03. That's the one that changes based on how much the house costs. So that's the one that goes in front of X. And I've got my equation. The purchase price of the home is $195,000. The sellers offered $5,000 in closing cost assistance. Will this cover all of their closing costs? Well, let's find out. 3% of the purchase price. Okay, so that right there is my X value. plus 249 just to boot. So let's find out 0 0.03 times 195,000 plus 249. Closing costs are $6,099. And the sellers offered 5,000 So we can take that off. That's kind of nice. So the Joneses would still owe $1,099. So you can start to see, once you find the one-time price, you just look at the other number and you know that's the number that's going to go in front of X that's going to be your slope. Last piece of this, because... These are kind of going in slope-intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. Okay, they look a little different, but they're still that way. The other piece of the pie with this, and we'll be using this again next week, is standard form. So reminder about standard form. It's been a while. 
So X and Y end up being on the same side. So when we do these, Josh bought three bags of potting soil and 10 bags of mulch from Home Depot, write an equation to represent the cost. Okay, so to me, I'm like, he bought three potting soils. You can make the variable what you want it to be. And 10 mulches. And that's gonna be how much it cost him. Okay, the two bits of info there will always tell you the costs there. Now, if Josh spent $40.91, okay, that would be the total cost. So that's this value. Mulch cost $275 per bag. So M was for mulch, that's $275. How much was a bag of potting soil? We don't know. We don't know what P is. That's what we're looking for. So this just becomes a regular old equation that I'm going to go through and I'm going to solve like I would any time for a variable. So I got to get the 3P alone, so the 2750's got to go. Oops, not 3, Hardy. Not 3. So 3P equals 1341, and we're going to divide by 3. So mulch costs... 447 a bag. And we kind of wrap it up with that. Ooh, I should do one more. Did I just flip them? Oh my gosh, I did. Thank you. Oh dear. Oh dear. Very important that I actually label it correctly. Now I'm trying to make the mulch cost more. That wasn't good. Thank you. All right. Last one. Because this one's got a different twist, and I want to make sure, because I know it comes up again. Kaylee has a collection of quarters and nickels. All right. We know what quarters are worth. We know what nickels are worth. Write an equation to represent the total value of the coins. Okay. So if quarters, let's say, are Q, we'd have 0.25 times every quarter, because that's what they're worth, plus... 0 0.05 plus every nickel. And that, I guess we'll say T, total value, right? Because I can use V. And now again, over here, we're just going to plug in the values. If the total value is 550, and Kaylee has 17 quarters, How many nickels does she have? There'll always be one variable that's left without knowing what it is. So, we'll multiply that 17 for our quarters. And now we're back to the two-step equation again. Let's see here, divide by the 0 0.05, I'm going to get my label right this time, and get me 25 nickels. So here's how we're going to kind of break this down. Um, we're not going to look at the entire part of the next piece in the practice. We're going to do a partial because part of it I need to show you tomorrow as we're kind of rolling back through this. So here's what we're going to look at as far as the practice goes, and then I can put this back up if some of you need it. So in the practice, you're going to be on page five and six, but today we're only going to go with one through eight because we haven't done the last part yet. 
So you're going to have four problems where you're creating equations, four application problems. That's it. And again, the answers are online, and I've also got them up here in front. If you don't want to mess around with the Chromebook, you can just check here and be able to check in with me. But do your practice. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard after you've been